Should the Seattle Mariners trust in Jorge Polanco? Find out more in today's video. So I kind of wanted to bring up an interesting topic to you guys that I thought about last night. Obviously, it's nothing new that the Seattle Mariners have struggled to find a fit for second base the past few seasons. And when we acquired Adam Frazier and Colton Wong, we weren't sitting back thinking, wow, these are horrible moves. We kind of hope these guys would come in and do what they've done their whole career. Adam Frazier came off a 305 average season with a 113 WRC plus. But when he came to Seattle, he only hit 238 with an 80 WRC plus. Similarly with Colton Wong, he posted up a 251 average and a 116 WRC plus the season before coming to Seattle. And again, these are veteran guys that we thought would come in and just do their job without even questioning it. But I kind of want to focus on why did they fail in Seattle? And can we trust Jorge Polanco to not go out and do the same thing? And I hate to be the one to reminisce on obviously the struggles of Adam Frazier and Colton Wong especially, but I feel like it is something important for us to talk about because we have had major struggles at second base in the past few seasons. And we haven't even had someone that could be a little bit above average to even help us out. And yes, Adam Frazier had some important hits and Colton Wong had the important hit and against the twins. But again, that's just one regular season game and not what we were expecting from them. And the one thing to keep in mind throughout this video is that these guys hit for higher average. These aren't guys that have a high strikeout rate or hit a lot of home runs. And you're gonna see why that specific statistic of why they're high average guys and why when they came to Seattle, they struggled so much. So let's start with Adam Frazier. On the screen, I'm going to pull up two spray charts. The one is from his 2021 season where he had with the Pirates and one other team where he had an all-star season. And the other is from a season with the Mariners. So when you look at these charts, you might not be like, oh, there's certain specific things that stand out right away. But there's going to be a lot of similarities when you look at Colton Wong's charts in Seattle versus his career and Adam Frazier's. As you can see by his 2021 chart, there's a lot of singles and doubles to left field, which they're high average guys. So of course they're going to spray the ball all over the field because that's what makes them so good at what they do. But now you look at the 2022 chart and you notice there's not as many hits in the left field area. So not that you could tell by the naked eye, but Adam Frazier had eight doubles down the left field line in 2021 versus in 2022, he only had four down the left field line. And the one thing that really stands out is the singles. You can see how many more green dots there are in the 2021 chart than are in and then in the 2022 chart, especially in the left field part. And one other thing to kind of look at is the home runs. And obviously these guys aren't power hitters, but you see in the 2021 chart, he hit, hit more home runs to the right field part, obviously. But in the 2022 chart, you're talking about yanking them down the line. So the only time he really hit him out was if he really yanked him by the foul pole. And you're probably sitting there like, T, what's the point of this? So now let's look at Colton Wong's spray chart from where he had a 2021 to 2022 season and then his time in the Mariners in 2023. Obviously, there are a lot more hits on the 2021 and 2022 chart. But again, there's something very similar that stands out. Look at the left field doubles down the line. Colton Wong had 13 doubles down the left field line in his spray chart on the left. When on the right, he has absolutely zero doubles down the left field line. And similar to Frazier's chart, look at the home runs. So the home runs kind of range from the right center field gap kind of to the pole. While in the chart with the Mariners, you can see he pulled most of them down the line, which is near the foul pole. But again, what is the point of all this? So like I said, the number one thing that stands out is that these guys hit for higher average. And what makes people that hit for higher average so good is the fact that they can use every single part of the field. But for some reason, when guys come to Seattle, the mentality kind of changes. So in their minds, they already know Seattle is a very hard park to hit in. And there's, there's definitely no disputing that. It is a very difficult park to hit in. But what they try to do when they come to Seattle is they try to overcompensate. So they're like, okay, I don't hit for a lot of power, but what I want to do is I still want to try to get some lift under the ball. And in their mind, their only way that they can actually hit home runs out of the park is if they yank them down the line, which changes their entire approach at the plate. When you're simply focused on yanking and not just sticking to what you've done your entire career, which is using all parts of the field, you're going to mess yourself up completely. As someone who plays baseball, it's definitely easier in your head to just kind of be like, all right, yeah, like I'm going to try to hit home runs. And once you start thinking that aspect of the game, things get a lot harder, but that takes away from everything else. Instead of just sitting back on a ball, if it's in the outside part of the plate, I'm going to drive it the other way. If it's on the inside part, I'm going to pull it. And again, these guys aren't home run hitters, but Adam Frazier, lowest home run total was his in his rookie year we had two and then his second lowest was with Seattle similarly with Colton Wong he had one of his lowest home run totals ever with Seattle but what makes Jorge Polanco so different and why as fans and as a team should we trust in him to play second base and not come in and be a failure as we know Jorge Polanco has a very long track sheet of succeeding in the MLB but so did Adam Frazier and Colton Wong let's start off with the obvious Jorge Polanco has way more power than I both of these guys and even combined I would say he has more power than them like this guy doesn't hit wall scrapers he hits the ball about 25 rows up when he gets it but I'm going to pull up Jorge Polanco's spray chart from his entire career. So all nine seasons he's played. And I mean, just look at this spray chart. Obviously he is a switch hitter, but he hits the ball to every single part of the park. Doubles down the right field line, down the left field line, singles all over the field 
home runs, dead center, right field, left field. He hits the ball everywhere. And for him coming to Seattle, yes, again, it is a harder ballpark to hit in, but his mindset isn't going to change. Him being a switch hitter, he doesn't have to change his approach at all because in his mind, he knows he can have enough power where he can hit from both sides of the plate. While with Adam Frazier and Colton Wong, they were trying to overcompensate for the fact that they don't have as much power, which completely takes them away from their approach of using the entire field. So would I necessarily be sitting here saying this if Jorge Polanco wasn't a switch hitter? Maybe not, because at the end of the day, it is a risk bringing anyone into T-Mobile because we've seen how some of them perform. But I think Jorge Polanco being able to hit for power on both sides of the plate, as well as him already being a high average hitter, it means he doesn't have to change his approach or try to overcompensate for anything. So that's one thing I kind of wanted to bring up to you guys, because I feel like I know we don't want to reminisce on the whole Colton Wong and Matt Frazier failures in Seattle. But I definitely do think it's something interesting, especially with the trade for Jorge Polanco. And I feel like it's definitely something that's not really talked about as why certain players just fail in Seattle. The one thing with Jorge Polanco though, is I do hope he figures out his strikeout percentage because it was a little high for him last season. But again, this is a guy who put up 33 home runs in 2021. And he also had 14 last year and only 80 games played before he got hurt. And truly the guy just knows how to play baseball. So for some reason, if you were a fan that was kind of overthinking the Polanco thing, and maybe he may not be as good as he's been his entire career, because a lot of guys who come in to struggle, no matter what their past has been, I think kind of using these spray charts and kind of explaining what made Frazier and Wong struggle so much in Seattle is definitely something that'll help. So I'm truly personally very excited for this season. I think Jorge Polanco just makes us that much better. But please let me know if you guys did enjoy this video. And if you guys did enjoy this little deep dive into the spray charts and some of the failures of players in Seattle. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.